Meghan is sleeping at Sandringham. Has the world gone mad? It's like a future episode of The Crown, right there. The Dilemma The Queen's grandson wants to bring his gorgeous fiancé to Christmas at Sandringham, an all-family affair with a detailed timetable for the arrival of guests, room plans, meals, embossed menus and place cards, and a festive schedule engraved in stone. Which is lovely. But it's also unprecedented. Harry and Meghan are engaged but not yet married. Plus, thus far the royals have followed very proper and Victorian etiquette for this formal family celebration. Di, Fergie, etc. were not included until their heads were firmly in the noose, sorry, I mean until they'd trooped up the aisle and down again. And yet Miss Markle is going to be glad handing church voters on Christmas Day like the crested, copper-bottomed member of the firm. When Princess Diana wobbled before her nuptials, her sisters warned she couldn't bolt as her face was already on the tea towels, and the gift shop on the Sandringham estate has already stocked up with Harry Meghan merch to commemorate the engagement even the gold-plated spoon, if you're short of stocking fillers. I'm afraid I found myself reacting like a starchy matron to these festive arrangements. I found myself Lady Brathnelling out loud, Sandringham, Sandringham, for Christmas. I even spent time wondering about the, you know, possible constitutional improprieties of the visit. I imagined the conversation between the Queen and Prince Philip, perhaps over the Dubonnet, before Blue Planet I I. But Lilibet, I could hear Philip saying, don't be a goose. They've been living together in sin already. We had that Blair woman and her blessed contraceptive cap to Balmoral, didn't we? And then I hear the Queen. Yes, darling, but like it or not I am for the time being anyway, the head of the church as well as head of state and one mustn't be seen to endure such casual arrangements for this is how I would imagine her mat to refer to premarital sex particularly at this time of year. I have my Christmas message to think of, I take a rather old-fashioned line on all this. For what it's worth, I don't think Meghan should stay under the same roof as Her Majesty over Christmas, even if she put in a separate bedroom. I approve of the antique custom which preserves some distinction between the single and married state, even if it's a false one, and remember an old lady once saying to me, in the old days, one got engaged and then saved oneself for one's wedding night, though it was a bit like being given the pony for one's birthday, then not being allowed to ride it until Christmas. It goes without saying that my adult offspring's girlfriends and boyfriends are welcome to stay shape moy in the same bedroom at any time of year, but, as you are no doubt thinking as you read that, well, she would say that wouldn't she? She's not the queen. Quite so. My fears, however, have been laid on hearing that an elegant solution might have been found by the wise heads of the royal households, and that Megar are stating up the road with Will Cat, in an Amber Hall. Phew. And meanwhile we can also rejoice that the Facebook relationship status of Meghan and Harry will go from engaged to married on May 19th at St. George's Chapel in Windsor. Which leaves only one remaining dilemma, and this one for Meghan, as she races about the retail area of Kensington doing her Christmas shopping. What do you buy for the woman who owns everything, and all her relatives? Jeremy Vine of Radio 2 has pleaded for the term dad dancing to be banned as it discourages men from strutting their funky stuff under disco balls, and I agree. Men need to be chivied like donkeys onto the dance's floater, only to slink away at the earliest opportunity. It's very depressing. I know most social events are organized by women for the benefit of other women, but the least chaps can do after we've done all the work is give us the occasional twirl. Dad dance like nobody's watching. Chaps, women will love you for it. The world and his wife asked me how my father got on in the jungle. Here with exclusive father-daughter snippets. There was nothing to do. So you just sat on a log all day. Piece of cake. What about the trials? The grisly sight of a camper scoffing the lady pig's translucent rubbery front bottom will forever haunt me. Potty problem, my father insisted. I did one with a chap called a mere con said he used to be the welterweight champion of the world, where we were whirled around and it rained bugs on you. Piece of cake, but he screamed like a baby. And top crown queen of the jungle. Total sweetie she calls him clamp pop. I know I am partial but I do think the patriarch, and his indelible positivity, has done us all proud.